Hello, good morning, good evening, good day. Let me do, do a quick check. Can you hear me and can you see my screen? Thank you. Let us begin. Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 25th March, 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company registered in Singapore. I would not take time to go through introduction. If you are interested, then you can visit the superiorprofit.co website and click on about menu. To, more, to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how you can use Superior Profit way to invest and trade profitably. Before we begin, let's go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will go through technical analysis using Q system of key markets, oil, gold, global index for India, and some Forex charts. Then we will look at USA market in terms of SPY, QQQ, DIA, before going into broad market sector and industry analysis using graphs and ranking. We look at some of the trades posted since last class in our traders community, and we will be happy to discuss any trade ideas from all of you for the upcoming week. You can ask question at any time using the Q&A panel. I have it open on the second terminal and I will keep an eye if I cannot answer any question during the class, I will make sure that before we end today, I will address all the questions. Let's start with key markets. We will look at USO, the US based ETF for oil. Now we have discussed in last few sessions that once oil drops and comes to this memory support line, then it may provide a good opportunity to take a low risk, long entry point. When oil came here and went up, we mentioned in last class that it didn't hit the memory support line yet. And therefore, though an alert day trader could have taken a profitable trade, we didn't have any swing trade opportunity yet. Now, if we look at same USO chart, as of Friday's close, then we see multiple signals that may be in favor of the trade. In the weekly chart, we see price has come to the memory support line and went up and the same thing happened in daily chart as well. We also have a bull release on the last candle in trade station. It is shown by the star plus symbol and the candle shape of last Friday is bullish. So it has indications 
of a potential swing long trade from here now if we look at the checklist for the bounce trade setup almost all the conditions are met and bounce trade only requires daily chart to be considered but one condition that has not been met at least as of friday is that there is not very high activity on friday however if we look back when price came to the kind of double bottom earlier at this point it had exertion so with that information combining the egg possible exertion at an earlier point and the fact that it has found support both in weekly and in daily and the bull release signal has come and the fact that stop loss is very narrow and friday's close is above thursday's close with a bullish shape candle it is possible for an alert trader to take a very low risk long trade that is my view i will be happier of course if all the checklist conditions were met for bounce trade right on friday's candle that is having very high or extreme high activity that hasn't come yet so one approach that superior profit traders can follow in those situations is not to enter the trade right on friday but wait for the market to start on monday and enter using fine tune real time chart that is a 5 minute chart and if we open uso on monday it will also form the early range high the top cyan line and early range low and if price indeed goes above early range high then one could take a early range breakout long trade let me clear the older if it goes above early range high one might take a long trade on intraday basis putting stop just below early range low of monday not of this friday's day but i'm just explaining it using friday's chart and that will give a very low risk calculated in terms of 5 minutes though the actual trade is planned to be swing trading so that gives extremely attractive reward risk ratio and that is the approach i sometimes follow and some other superior profit traders also follow when the candle of last day is not fulfilling all the conditions instead of trading the trade right at market close may take next day using fine tune template that is the view on oil we will not like to short for sure at this point if it goes up to value area somewhere around 1060 1080 especially to the yellow direction line and tilts down that may give a magenta candle and a go with flow short opportunity but right now we will not like to short oil let us look at gold using gold etf gd gld interestingly this memory lines work very well extremely well just as in case of oil price came down to the memory support and stopped there in case of gold we see that price went up to the memory resistance and stopped there and it is there in daily chart weekly didn't quite touch the memory resistance but came very close to it if we look on the friday candle there is no trade signal for short because the candle color traffic light color is green we don't take a swing short trade on green traffic light so we will not be shorting it of course we will not be taking a long also keeping in view the memory line that is just ahead of us the memory resistance line so we will wait again just in just as was in case of 
oil one will not enter any short here but on monday looking at fine tune five minute real time chart where it will form the early range again early range high and low and in this case we will be looking to enter a short so if price goes below early range low we may take a very low risk short trade on intraday basis put stop just above early range high and then see if it continues to go down if it continues to go down then if the early range is of this uh, height for example then if the risk distance is covered it will be good to book some profit or at least put trailing stop in place so that the trade is risk free from that time onward that is our analysis of gold and eso keeping in mind the memory support and resistance respectively now let's look at go to trades uh, go to meta stock and let's look at india nifty index we discuss this instrument also regularly and we mentioned that we are not going to take a long trade because price was above boundary line upper boundary line though the magenta candle came we wouldn't take a short trade because the memory support line is just below the close of the magenta line and now next week if price comes down and breaks the memory this support memory most likely we will have to watch but most likely it will create a magenta go with flow daily candle with a potential go with flow short setup at that same time price in weekly chart may come back below this watermark high level creating a fake upside breakout so we may watch for that for a potential short trade there doesn't seem to be any good long opportunity right now unless price uh, goes up tomorrow monday uh, we can see 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 now if monday price goes up and even if it creates a cyan flow bullish candle the reward risk will not be good because the potential profit will be at upper boundary which will be very close if not at the uh, the, the i mean that monday's close may be very close if not at the upper boundary if price goes up therefore we will not have a low risk high reward long entry point if we have a bullish candle on monday or tuesday on the other hand if price goes down it will create a beautiful low risk go with flow short candle short, short trade setup so we may uh, watch out for that that is about nifty the india broad market index now let's look at sing dollar Maybe let's just use the daily chart. Sing dollar came down and hit the watermark low level and also the slow direction line at the same time. So again, this is not the point where we would like to initiate a short trade, even if a magenta flow candle has formed. We would like to take a short trade near value areas at such points. not when price is hitting lower boundary or hitting a support line like the white or yellow direction lines so at this point we are not going to think of any superior profit trade setup either long or short for sing dollar now in last class enamul had talked about ask about australian dollar and we had a look at that 
and what we discussed is potential trade opportunities and that actually worked out so i would like to come back to that in last class price was below this resistance memory but this long bullish candle had already formed one two three four five so the long bullish candle had already formed and i had mentioned that in superior profit way we will not like to take a long trade even if price went and closed above the resistance memory because that will be a breakup trade with stop loss very far and potential profit target very close at upper boundary instead a preferred trade would have been as i mentioned that if it tilts down from the memory resistance line now we see there is a bear release on this candle as well however as i mentioned earlier also today on a green traffic light candle we are not going to take a swing short trade the stretch release bull release or bear release both are very fast signals we cannot take a trade just based on that we have to combine that with multiple signals and one guideline we always follow that for swing trade short we never take it on a traffic light green color candle on the other hand when this candle yellow candle formed with a bear release and price came down from multiple resistance line that would be as discussed in last class a very low risk trade entry point with stop loss just above recent high entry point at close of the day and once the risk distance is covered but we would like to book quick profit because this is a reversal trade when price comes to value area and or risk distance is covered it is best to book profit swing traders need to book profit quickly and plan the trade beforehand and if we had done that then we could actually anticipate the trade when this candle was forming could even enter it using early range of this particular candle and make substantial profit by now that is one way we like to study the charts anticipate a trade and take a trade well before others can take let's now move to us market let's use trade station for that if we look at spy the snp 500 etf we see that price made a bearish traffic magenta candle and even before that it made a bearish headwind at pendulum high the magenta dot on top of this yellow candle since then since the bearish headwind came price couldn't breach that high where a watermark high level has formed instead it created a lower high and subsequently it has also created a lower low so now on daily chart spy is in downtrend and in weekly chart the candle color is bearish as price is already near lower boundary we are not going to take a short trade at this point and because it is in a downtrend we are not going to take any long trade either so for spy our preferred situation will be that price comes back to the value area then tilt down and give us a magenta flow bearish candle therefore creating a possible go with flow short setup we also see in terms of activity the down days have been on heavier volume and same for the weekly chart though there is no very or extreme high activity on the weekly chart relative to the last few days the activity was much higher on down week which was last week so spy on short term daily time frame is in confirmed downtrend at this point however as i mentioned it's already at lower boundary so we are not going to take a short trade right now 
let's go to qqq in qqq it is it has been stronger of all the three etfs spy dia qqq it has been stronger and though it has come down in last week especially because of this large bearish down day with very high activity it is still stronger among the three it created not a bearish shape candle but an indecisive shape candle in the daily chart with both upper tail and lower tail and though weekly has turned magenta color background color magenta that is bearish weekly also has an upper tail and lower tail and the fact that it is stronger than broad market can be seen from the relative performance line going up for quite some time let's look at the last etf dia and here dia chart is very similar to that of spy it also displayed a bearish headwind and then price couldn't breach that high a watermark high level has formed at that point it had a long bearish flow candle that brought price right near the lower boundary now it has lower high and also lower low so in terms of daily chart short term time frame dia like spy is also in confirmed downtrend the weekly candle is quite bearish it was preceded by a bearish headwind signal since then price couldn't go up so both in weekly and daily dia is bearish and more bearish than qqq possibly more bearish than spy also now in superior profit we are always looking for more and more edges in favor of our trade and when we saw that the bearish headwind appeared in weekly and daily at the same time that would have given us more confidence to take trade on the short direction and more importantly if we had a long position we will surely need to protect our position by either exiting some position or tightening our stop using the q protection signal so if we look at the dia chart and i just switch to hop off template you can see that as price was going up this cyan candle created a go with flow long trade potential and since then the q protection signal for long position has beautifully protected profit till the very top and it would have stopped out right on this red candle letting us ride the long move for quite long time this is a very effective way of protecting profit and along the way some somebody from superior profit of course might have booked some profit earlier the other approach could be when the protection line is going up sharply just follow it along the way now i will not suggest following it along the way for a stock but because dia qqq spy they are broad market etfs they are not expected to suddenly gap up or gap down it may happen but it is not so common like in case of a common stock so for etf trading especially the liquid etfs like these three if it is going up sharply then instead of booking profit it is okay to follow the trailing stop using q protection line so that was an analysis of gold oil nifty sing dollar australian dollar and the three broad market etfs 
let's now move to broad market analysis sector and industry analysis in terms of broad market analysis we look at nasdaq composite index on the left hand side and nyac composite index on the right hand side both using weekly chart we have the indices themselves which are still in bullish trend with higher high higher low though the last week had a bearish flow candle in s in in nysc after long time the last bearish flow candle was here that is somewhere around november of last year and this is the first bearish flow candle in nyc composite index since then it has been a long time there was a bearish headwind just a few days ago in nyc composite and price couldn't breach the high reached at that point till now in the nasdaq composite just like qqq is stronger than spy that is reflected in the broad market also the traffic light hasn't turned red or bearish yet though there is a bear release after many weeks i think after 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 after eight successive weeks there has been a bear release in nasdaq composite last week in terms of the internals that is new high low continues to be weak same is true for the other market internals now many of them actually 1 2 3 4 5 of them still closed positive though four of them declined we can know which ones are declining by looking at the color so if it is green color it is positive but declined this three and this is the fourth one cyan color means that it is positive and went up and red color means it is negative but went up so four of the broad market internal studies decline the five of them close positive so we conclude objectively that last week's reading is neutral broad market is strongly bullish continues to be bullish internals continue to be weak and specifically for last week the reading is neutral let's go to sector analysis now in sector analysis we see that 9 out of the 10 sectors ended in negative territory this week that is showing that the whole broad market was weak only utility a defensive sector ended positive for the last week in sector analysis we look at three time intervals previous five days which is shown by the red bar Five days prior to that, the blue bar, and ten days prior to the blue bar, shown by the green bar. Together, they show the data of twenty days or about one month. And we can see only utility closed positive. The red bar ended on the right hand side. For all the other nine sectors, the red bar ended on the left hand side. Financial was the worst decliner. it declined so much in this particular week that the reading of uh, it, it it is very bearish among all the sectors it is very bearish now and you might have seen that on last friday we initiated two shorts one on bank of america and one on jp morgan by analyzing sonar where we saw that multiple banks were showing bearish signal 
in terms of swing trade. So we had initiated it based on that industry information. And of course, the Q charts were also bearish for going for a short trade. We initiated it. And as financials decline, we easily booked profit. But we didn't wait for the financials to decline so much throughout last week. We were ahead of many traders by using Q sonar and quick analysis of Q charts. Now, overall, the flip flop of sectors from positive to negative and vice versa continues. That is evident in industries as well. If we see sectors over the three review periods, it is difficult to find one which has constant, consistently remained positive or negative. So utilities, it was negative, positive, positive, telecom switched between negative, positive, negative again, technology, positive, positive, negative. Likewise, except financials, financials for the last three review periods have been negative, but for all the other sectors, there is flip flop. And that we are seeing for quite some time, it will be more obvious in the industry analysis as well. Let's look at the five best performing industries. Gold miners went up along with gold. We just studied gold in terms of GLD ETF and saw it went up right into memory resistance and there is no trade now. But as gold went up to the memory resistance, the gold miners also went up. If you see the percentage increase of the strong industries, you see it is between 1.1 .1 to 2.3 for the top 10 performing, top performing industries, 10 of them, between 1.1 .1 to 2.3. Now, four of the best performing utilities are actually related uh, sorry, four of the best performing industries are related to utility. One is multi-utility, one is conventional electricity, electricity and utilities. These are defensive sectors. So probably people are defensive now in this particular way, but the flip-flop is continuing. Okay, there is, a, there is a, a very helpful comment from Anonymous that probably there are 11 sectors now. They just added rate as a sector. Thanks for sharing this. I will look it up. We get the data from Thomson Reuters. I will look up for the rate sector. And if I get the data, I will add it to the sector analysis from next week onward. Thanks a lot for this information. Let's continue to the next graph. That is the five worst performing industries. Now here, interestingly, the renewable energy equipment is the worst performer and declined heavily by 9.4%. So one thing we see, renewable energy equipment continues to be one of the worst performers. If we are studying the ranking table regularly, we know that it was 160 around that for a long time. It tried to go up for a couple of weeks, but now not only this week, even previous week or previous two, three weeks, it is declining. That means that trying to catch a falling knife is not a good idea. Trying to catch a falling knife is a not a good idea, even if the stock has fallen a lot. And if at all a long is taken at the bottom of a weak industry stock, using Q chart analysis in the stock has to be always planned and used. That is the superior profit way. And I showed the Q protection signal for one instrument just now. It tends to protect the profit very well while keeping the stop, especially the initial stop loss, slightly away so that we don't get easily whipsawed. The second observation is four of the worst performers belong to metal and mining industries. That is iron and steel, industrial metal mining, aluminum, and also general mining. These, indus these industries are also sometimes going up, going down. As an industry group, of course, 
at a stock level, there may be swing trade opportunities. And we saw we had profitable trade in some banks to industry groups related to banks came among the 10 worst performing industries. Let's go to the best perform, uh, sorry, the industries with biggest rank improvement. And here we see the flip flop again, quite clear. Pharma and biotech were worst performers just a week ago. But in this week, we see that biotech, pharma, healthcare, pharma, four biotech pharma related industry groups are biggest rank improving industries. Now airlines and railroad, this airline on the left hand side and rail, railroad are also among the best rank improvers. However, they were worst performer just one week ago. And I, in this class, I also kept the last week's snapshot ready. You can see this was one week ago and we noted that actually three transportation related industries, airline, railroad, as well as trucking, they all declined last week. They were among the worst performing industries and now they are the best rank improving industries, not trucking, but airline and railroad. And same for biotech, biotech was worst performer, these two industry groups last week, but now we see that several biotech healthcare industries are among the best rank improver. This again shows the flip-flop. No clear decision by the large traders to take one side or other bullish or bearish that is being reflected not only in broad market indices or the ETFs, but also in sector and industry analysis. For industries with biggest rank declines, 10 of them, we see that six of the biggest rank declines, six of them actually happened in industries that were among top performers just one week ago. So consumer electronics, gambling, farming, fishing, basing resources, forestry paper, industrial metal and mining, they are among the biggest rank decliners. But if we see last week's graph, five days best performing industry last week had all those industry groups, gambling, consumer electronics, industrial metal mining, farming, fishing, basic resources, forestry or paper. So this is again showing the flip flop among the industries sector. And we have to be cautious before taking a directional trade, especially longer term directional trade. So in trade opportunities are always there and day trade opportunities are always there. Now, there is a question from Anonymous. What can be the potential reason? I wouldn't know the reason because they don't tell me, but the data shows that the big investors, they are not taking either side. Now, we could hypothesize that probably they are exiting their positions gradually, but that is just a hypothesis. I would not like to go much deeper onto that hypothesis. It is possible. It is possible because the internals are weak, but it is just a possibility. Probably the bigger investors are waiting to see whether the market in US or even the world market goes up from here or goes down. There may be uncertainties, not only related to the new administration in America, but also possibly what will be the impact of that uncertainty on uh, Chinese industries. But again, that is hypothesis. That's why I, I don't like to comment much on that. Websites, medias are full of such articles. But finally, we can keep an eye on those, but trust only our eyes and take the trade, what the chart tells us. Just like we took the trade on JPM, in Bank of America. By the way, I remember about two, three weeks ago, somebody asked also about aluminum, uh, which was at the top. And again, in the media, there are news that China government is 
possibly clamping down on polluting industries. There are possibilities that mining companies in Philippines are having difficulty with the government who is also clamping down on polluting industries or large mining company in Indonesia uh, stopped their production for a while again for some pressure from the government. All these are possible reasons, but again, I prefer, I prefer to look at the chart, what it says, and then take short term trade or even long term trusting my own eyes. I have seen that if I try to look at the media, there are always two kinds of views for anything, whether it is broad market or aluminum in particular, and it is difficult to have a singular view on market from the media. So I stay away from that. That was a somewhat long answer to a short question. <laughs> okay, so we, we completed the broad market sector analysis in terms of graphs. Let's now go to the ranking table. For that, we'll go to the website. By the way, if you wanted to, you, you may all know, but no harm repeating. If you go to home broad market, the graph that I shared just now, you can actually download by clicking here. If you click there, it will download in your computer. You can save it so that you, if you want, you can have the record of all the successive weeks. And same is true for sector industry. You can download the sector analysis by clicking here and the industry analysis by clicking here. Uh, not only for record of what happened last week, but sometimes it is good to do the sorting based on last one month's performance, not five days as is shown here. That's why we provide the data. You may ignore the last five day, 10 days, especially when market is showing, sharp, showing such flip flop and focus on a longer term sorting using the one month column. So you can always download it. Now utilities we saw is the only sector that ended in positive. We can see that in the ranking also. And financials is the worst performer. It came up in ranking as well. By the way, financial was ranking one earlier. So somewhere down the line, we should have looking at the data protected our existing profit using Q protection line. And, and last week we also initiated a short trade that ended well. Some industries like healthcare is showing some sectors showing the flip flop magenta, magenta here, magenta here, trying to become strong, then go down to ranking nine out of 10 and now again improving a little bit. So it is showing flip flop in this sector. If we go down to the industry ranking, then we saw gold mining went up, coal and mining interestingly went up after being weak for many review periods. So you may look for either swing or day trade in coal. Probably there were some such opportunities already in past two weeks, but I see coal has improved even between two weeks ago and just last week from ranking eight, rank eight to rank four. So there may be possible swing or day trades there. So in superior profit way, we like to take long trades, maybe the top 10% uh, ranking. So there are 160 ranks. You may see up to 16 rank and look for long opportunities here. Some, some people may go to 20%, some people may go to 10% or some people may try top 10% first. If they don't find any trade, they may expand their search to next 10%. Going down to the Worst, perf worst ranking industry groups, renewable energy, it, it is now one of the worst performers. Someday if it goes up, it will give very 
profitable long term trades there are large companies in this group including first solar etc uh, by the way in last one month i checked this particular group has declined by 23% that's a very large percentage drop even though it was weak earlier as well so that's a very large drop and then aluminium dropped again we discussed about it there was a potential short trade some days ago in elqua so if you keep an eye on this industry ranking sector ranking and heat map you can often catch the trade more confidently and before others yeah actually there is a comment uh, it's okay to repeat i also think so for myself also because we all need to follow trading with discipline we have established a powerful superior profit way where we align broad market sector industry with the actual q charts so we have technical uh, everything aligned but then finally we have to trade with discipline the repetition always helps with that another thing helps is participating in the community and these classes so that was a view on the sector and industry ranking now let us go and look at some of the trends i also got some question on forex trading uh, recently from some traders i explained the swing trade that could be taken based on last last week's analysis of australian dollar i don't know if the australian traders took benefit of that either as a day trade or a swing trade i will not go through that swing trade again i actually posted it let me short by new if i short by new it will uh, if i click new it will short by the posting date so audi usd bounce box swing trade short that was a possible trade now let's look at euro usd day trades and this concept for the trades i share for four successive days early range breakout trade all were profitable i share two snapshots but i will open meta stock after going through these two charts to show that the previous two days that is friday thursday then friday thursday then wednesday tuesday right now friday thursday wednesday tuesday okay yeah those four days should be profitable now let's look at 23rd march and see how a forex day trader would have used the early range breakout and i explained just now that early range breakout could be used in case of gold on monday for example or oil on monday to take a precision entry of swing trade or as a day trade the same concept can be used for forex now for forex this is the symbol euro usd in meta stock the symbol is euro equal to eu or equal to that is euro usd because it is euro usd pair we have to set up the session time properly it is not the usual us market trading time that starts at 9:30 and closes at 4 pm est but we have to preferably trade during the most liquid session that is the london new york overlap session so that can be set using the ready made you know the ready made market specific setups are already available in faq i hope you know that but let me just point to it one more time if we go to our website under contact there is faq under faq you will find many useful articles one of them is about market specific setting for example i trade in usa india singapore multiple markets so if i am using real time data i have to set the session date session start and end times properly different markets start and end at different times and also the benchmark so i have done that for euro usd pair i have set the session start and end time to london new york overlap session 
and based on that based on that the early range high and the early range low were plotted of course we would like to take the day trade having an overall view of the forex pair or any instrument for that matter but in this case for simplicity i'm just looking at five minute chart but that is not superior profit way in superior profit way before we take a day trade on five minute chart we would like to establish the trend that we want to take using longer time frame that is daily not weekly for day trade we don't need to go to weekly but we can look at daily chart and for example if if we remember the gold chart it went up and now hitting memory resistance so we are trying to take a bearish trade with very low risk that is what i mean by looking at the daily chart to make a decision on direction and then trade only in that direction but in this case for simplicity i'm just looking at the early ranges so early range high and low were formed so early range breakout trade says that take a shot if it goes below early range low put a stop on the short trade just above early range high and book profit when the risk distance is covered or or a, a a profit target is hit so risk distance might have been covered when price came to the red dotted line red dotted line is last day's low so at this point itself some profit could be booked if not when the white dotted line formed that is the pause line then surely we will book profit now if somebody wants they could also hold partial position with trailing stop especially forex markets move more randomly and even e mini nasdaq e mini s&p 500 etc so for a day trader it is important to keep an eye on the risk they are accepting the reward that they are trying to get and once the risk distance is covered it is always good to start booking profit so this was on 23rd march using london new york overlap session and th this was a early range breakout short trade that worked perfectly let's go to the next chart this is also on short direction but this is using 22nd march using the same london new york overlap session again the early range high and the early range low formed price went below early range low so a short would be initiated at that point with a stop just above early range high the risk amount will be this much and once the risk distance is covered one will start booking profit so that could be done at the pause line that was earlier day or surely it will be done on last day's low by the way when price hit this last day's low that is the red pivot line and then a bull release signal came that would have given a stretch release very low risk long day trade opportunity i mentioned in last class while discussing aussie dollar on daily chart that forex pairs don't have reliable activity data but it was if it was in case of s p 500 we would like to see s p 500 futures for example we would like to see very extreme high activity on the bull release signals and such day trade opportunities are often there in s p 500 uh, futures so in a way you can say that if we trade s p 500 futures we have clearer view of what is going on in forex one information is not so reliable that is the activity information so we can ignore then that and trade but futures or stocks stocks provide more information for us to take the trade more confidently so these are the two charts i posted but let me go to meta stock and show the previous two days early range breakout trades as well meta stock and let us open euro usd but before that i will uh, my my session etc were set to usa market as i mentioned in faq all these setups are available so i have put them on my what is this called shortcut or something startup 
so i can just click on forex london new york overlap session and it will override the session start end it will also override benchmark if applicable and liquidity if applicable but we don't need that for forex so i will close this pair this instrument and now i will open euro usd using q fine fine tune real time five minute chart on friday in fact the date was 24th march on friday now if we see i have already shared the data of 22 and 20 22nd and 23rd march that time the friday's data was not available but now i see that on friday also there was a profitable early range breakout trade but this time in the long direction i think you all can easily see that early range high and early range was low was formed after the new york overlap new york london overlap session started so you take a long as the early range high was broken put a stop just below early range low and start booking profit once the risk distance is covered so obviously the risk distance was easily covered and profit target was hit so that happened on friday let me go back for the entire week this is early range and this is 22nd so 22nd 23rd 24th we have already seen let's go back and see this is 22nd okay this is 22nd beginning of early range okay let's go back to 21 this is 21 22nd okay go back 21 okay this is i think 21st yes you can see the pop-up i hope this is 21st march and again the early range high and low formed once the early range high was broken a long trade would be taken using early range breakout technique stop will be just below early range low and then clearly the risk distance was covered as it went up and profit would be booked by the way, we don't always wait for risk distance to be covered. If a significant pivot line is hit, we will make sure that it is not a losing trade after that. So these lines are drawn dynamically as new data comes in. If price has hit this pause line and gone above, we will probably put the stop right below to make sure that if it reverses, we are not going to turn a profitable trade into a losing trade or at least book enough enough position book profit on enough portion enough portion and leave stop on the remaining position at original position i discussed it earlier that seems to work better that is book partial profit at one of the pause lines enough quantity but not every, all quantity and leave original stop don't use trailing stop if we use trailing stop especially in volatile instruments like forex or even e mini futures most likely they will be hit on top of that nowadays market is not very decisive we saw in sector industry also that's why we are not um, we are better off to book profit and then leave partial position at the original stop not at trailing stop on the other hand there are periods where S&P 500 goes up down by 50 points. On those occasions, because the moves are much larger, it may be okay to start putting trailing stop as price goes up. Also, it depends on personal style. My style is book enough profit and leave the remaining at original stop so that the entire trade is risk free from the point I book profit. Okay, so this was which day was this this was 21st i think the week started on 28th so let's go back one more day this is 20th and we can see we are able to take combination of long trade and short trade on 28th march 
early range high and early range low were formed as early range low is breached we will take a day trade short direction put stop loss just above early range high with a very small risk and of course much more than that was achieved so again probably at this pause line half profit will be booked because that has already covered more than risk distance and then as i suggested leave stop at the original initial stop position with partial position and that will be exited uh, far below far below with higher profit and as it hits significant pivot levels you may start booking more and more profit by the way forex trades 24 hours so if you are holding position it's always 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 advisable to put a trailing stop before you fall asleep so we saw for euro usd pair for successive five days using early range breakout entry we could take a reasonable profit on all the days now that is not the only technique we can always look for reversal trades we need to have a decision on the direction and on this step for example if our decision on the direction was long direction based on daily chart then we will not actually take the early range breakout short trade but we will wait for price to come to a significant pivot level give a bull release signal and take a long right at the close of this five minute bar with a very small stop loss and book profit quickly probably at the next pivot level so again the direction may be decided in superior profit way based on longer term daily in this case for day trade and then wait patiently for a trade to set up in the anticipated trade direction like again for gold the anticipated trade direction preferred trade direction for gold day trade on monday will be short for oil will be long and if it doesn't work out the advantage is that our stop loss is very narrow now if you compare between early range breakout stop loss and the stretch release stop loss bull release or bear release at a major support level or resistance level especially if we had the volume data also this risk here is much lower stretch release has one of the smallest stop loss distance and by combining a pre-existing support resistance not only on the intraday chart but remember we are also using the daily chart to decide the direction then we are using activity using the bull release these trades work out pretty well however again for day trade one need to wait patiently for this time and then take the trade those who are taking day trade they can trade them uh, patiently not just keep on in my view don't just keep on taking long trade short trade all day long but decide a direction wait patiently for a trade in that direction to be set up so we came here in response to some queries i received on how to use q for forex trading so we saw forex swing trading example as well as forex day trading examples now let me go through the two companies bank of america and jp morgan those were posted on 17th march topics go back to topics this financial stock bearish trade let's see which one was that that was posted based on sonar on trade station actually somebody asked i'll i'll demonstrate quickly the sonar on trade station but we had entered the trade based on this chart and this was discussed in last class also because the trade was posted on friday saturday we had the class we had a very nice setup bearish headwind followed by a bearish flow in daily and weekly backdrop bearish also that was a beautiful setup and it worked out beautifully we didn't have to wait for the financial to weaken based on the sonar data we could take the shot and as it hit the lower boundary as well as the support line we are surely out of the trade at least partially enough position to make sure 
this Bank of America trade is risk free from now. And the JP Morgan trade was posted in the signals forum. Let me go to that again. And I mentioned that not only the industry was showing multiple stocks with bearish sign in the trade station sonar, or the same could be seen in Metastock sonar in a different format. But interestingly, the bearish headwind that came in Bank of America the exact same day it had come on JP Morgan also. So let's go back to the JP Morgan trade and see how it worked out. I, I probably am mixing up which one was shared in signals forum, which ones were shared in trade ideas. But if I cannot find, you know, you can always go to search and search for the other trades. So that should be JPM. I think JPM word should be there somewhere in the post. It will go through the entire community and find the all the JPM trades. So let's look at this. This is the latest one updated on 21st March. When we took the trade, the setup was very similar. There was a bearish headwind. There was a bearish candle. Support was broken and weekly was bearish. I remember last week we had a very nice discussion and we concluded that JPM was slightly more bearish than Bank of America because weekly chart had two times, two, two weeks, successive weeks bearish candle. And also, we know mentioned that it, the JPM was not oversold yet. There is no stretch signal here. BSE had a stretch signal already, but I mentioned that we, it's still okay. Uh, it's both are good short opportunities and I had posted it. So let's look at the result of JPM. Just like BSE had hit lower boundary after our short entry, same happened for JPM and in case of BSE, it hit support memory. In case of JPM, it hit the yellow direction line, slow direction line. Again, superior profit trade trader will surely book enough profit to make the entire trade risk-free from now on. And when a stock moves so sharply, probably they will not exit full position because this is a sharp down move and the sector, industry, multiple stocks and the industry are all bearish. So probably they will not book enter position, but book enough profit to make the entire trade risk-free. Now, uh, I would like to show the sonar on trade station, but before that, let me take a particular stock that was asked a few days ago, I think one or two weeks ago. It was, I think you may remember, it was um, NG's list. And we discussed it in that weekly market roundup and everybody concluded, including the person who had the trader who had asked the question, concluded that there was no long trade setup. Later on, the trader also posted a question in the support forum. By the way, support forum is not supposed to be used for trade ideas. It's only for product related issues. But I had written personally to the gentleman saying that there was no trade set up and I sometimes look back on those. Not that every time Q system has to be right. It Q system is not controlling the market, but it works quite often. And I wanted to look back at Angie's list. And you see, since the last time we discussed, maybe two weeks ago, somewhere here, Angie's list has not been able to go up. It is still inside narrow range. On top of that, now it is just below resistance memory. So there is no Q trade setup even now or throughout this entire period, there is no Q trade setup. What will be our preferred approach? Our preferred trade setup will be that price breaks out of the memory resistance goes up and comes bound and makes a higher low, giving us a go with flow long trade opportunity. We will not like to take the trade if 
just this memory line is broken that is not good enough because it is moving sideways there is no trade setup that is reliable enough to take a long trade at that point at the same time we see that there is a bullish headwind signal and it is stabilizing in the weekly chart for a while after sharp sharp drop with very high activity red activity candle then we had one green uh, green green bar with very high activity so it seems to be stabilizing but being superior profit trader we will patiently wait for this setup for this setup another approach could be a very low risk approach but little bit more risky approach would be to wait for ng's list to come to this level somewhere here probably go down and then tick up and that will give a very minuscule risk long term opportunity of course the chance of that trade stopping out is much higher than if it went up came down and made a higher low so both approaches are possible it is dependent on the style of the person i personally prefer to take this trade that has higher probability of success i have less stress in mind except if i am studying this stock for long time i am reading all its news corporate developments management development and have a basis to think that buyers will support it if it comes to the lower range in that case i may initiate the initiate the long at the lower end but must put a stop loss of course we must put a stop loss for the going flow also but if it comes down it will not be a going flow trade it will be probably at this point it will be a bull release stretch signal or sideways box signal that is uh, a stock that i wanted to share now let's have a look at the sonar on trade station it is possible to run in run sonar in the same way as meta stock we have all these scanners in trade station it is called scanner which is same as explorer in meta stock so if we want to look for go with flow long we just run this particular scanner now this scanner doesn't only look at daily chart but also looks at weekly chart in meta stock we have the same thing so let me close the fine tune template for euro usd you remember for all our trade setups or most of the trade setups we want to look at weekly chart with backdrop template and also daily chart with hop on template so for go with flow short we would like the backdrop to be bearish so in meta stock how we do that first we select our list of stocks say australia list of stocks liquid stocks that i have or you have separate list choose that choose give backdrop bearish and run it on weekly time frame once it is run meta stock will create a result that will be stored in last exploration then choose that now we have a list of stocks where backdrop is bearish now we are going to look for go with flow short in that list with a daily time frame so there are two steps to be followed but sometimes what i do i just run go with flow short on daily time frame not on last exploration result but on the actual list like australia stock i just run it and look at at a glance template so that is also acceptable it depends on personal choice if the list is very large then i may want to run the backdrop filter first before running the go with flow filter but if the list is small it is okay for me just to run the go with flow and then look at at a glance now in trade station when we run sonar in terms of scanner uh, it checks the weekly and daily together trade station allows that so interestingly once we do that we can actually sort it quickly using industry so i can see on friday actually i ran the i think i ran already based on friday's data we see multiple biotech companies were bearish and financials were bearish and remember dow jones industrial average was actually most bearish so i thought why don't i look at in industrial dd 
and they are linked. So if I click DD, it should go to my at a glance template. And I saw that there is a possible short trade possible, but then I didn't want to post it or think of taking it because the weekly you see is very indecisive. It has a lower candle. On the other hand, another interesting stock I found from Sonar and now, now let me go to the Sonar other part that is radar in trade station. So here we can, it's a tabular dashboard and we can insert any list of stocks, maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe 500, doesn't matter if the internet speed is good enough and have a reasonably powerful computer, you can drop any list, say, say uh, ETF with narrow spread options. You can create your own list of course, or USA stocks with narrow spread options and drop them. Then it will do hundreds of calculation almost every millisecond, every five, 10 millisecond. And then anything with opportunity, whether it is go with flow entry, headwind entry and bounce entry will actually float up to the top of the list. So if I now go up, I'm trying to click mouse and go up. You will see the one switch opportunity floated up in real time as data comes in every millisecond or so, this will be recalculated. The opportunities will float up. So I don't need to scroll down and look for opportunities. And again, here, if I want, I can always sort by industry or sector at the right hand side to see whether multiple stocks in same industry are showing either bullish or bearish signal. Now you remember when I posted the trade on Bank of America and JPM, this is what I got from Sonar instantly. I saw multiple banks, BSC, MS, BK, all of these were showing go with flow entry and magenta color is short entry. So I just click on them one by one that plotted the stock on the at a glance chart. And I had decided to take short on Bank of America and JPM at that time. Now, I ran Sonar and I can quickly find either Sonar in Metastock or in Trade Station in this tabular dashboard format, which has a lot of information, all very nicely color coded. But one stock that caught my eye, and let me show that, LMT, Lockheed Martin, a large defense, a defense company. I think we discussed it some time ago and see how beautifully again, Firstly, it created a bearish headwind. Then a watermark was formed. Price tried to go up, created a very bearish shape candle, and then it created a fake breakout and came down. Third time, it tried to go to the watermark level. One week, it breached it. The very next week, it came down, creating a reversal pattern, also with a bear release which was earlier there also. By the way, the headwind had a bear release also. So last week we see that there is a bear release. Now on the daily chart, it tried to go up, but came down with a very bearish shaped candle. And that was very high activity. So one thing we remember, though the activity was very high and green color, meaning on a closing basis between these two days, price did go up but the shape of the candle and the high activity tells us that it was sellers who were more aggressive and they were taking the opportunity. Most likely we cannot be hundred percent sure. Most likely the sellers were taking opportunity of the price going up and sell heavily so that the price came down and we see there was follow through subsequently at the right edge of the chart, the flow color is man, uh, magenta that is bearish. Strictly speaking, there is no, go with flow short trade because we don't have a lower high, lower low. So I am not going to suggest any trade, but if somebody is holding long term position in LMT, looking at the weekly chart, the triple top, bearish headwind, successive bear release, fake upside breakout, I think it is very, very good idea to book profit, if not broke, booked already, or at least put trailing stock. 
and an active trader may start looking for short opportunity. No standard superior profit short trade yet, so I'm not suggesting that right now. Let me, I think there are some questions on the Q&A. Let me go through it. While I go through it, uh, let me give a quiz. Let me look at Sonar and see. Let's look at Milan. We saw that pharma companies, I think, came down again. Milan is a pharma company. So this is the question. Just looking at daily chart, hop on template on the right hand side. Just, okay, no, no, let me rephrase. Not just looking at daily chart, looking at daily, weekly, both, weekly on the left hand side using backdrop, and on the right hand side, daily using hop on. When you would have taken a low risk trade, looking back from the right hand side. There is of course no trade on Friday, no trade on Friday for sure, because it is in downtrend, but price is already at lower boundary. We are not going to take a short trade now, and there is no headwind or box trade setup, so we'll not take a long trade. So the question is, if we look back inside the chart, on which candle, looking at daily, weekly, both, but tell me which candle on daily you would have taken a long or short trade following superior profit rate. While you do that, think about it. Let me go through the Q&A and try to answer the pending questions. I see three colors for pivot levels, red, white, and magenta, but you remember they are already taken care of in charts, right? So magenta pivot transforms to magenta candle, correct? Please elaborate a little. I see three colors for pivot. So that is from Anonymous. Could you tell which template you are referring to? Are you referring to hop on template or the intraday fine tune template? I'll have to scroll down and see the answer from the trader, but I'll come back to this. I see three color for pivot levels, red, white, magenta. Probably that is referring to fine tune because you know, all the templates in Q are different. So if somebody tells there are pivot levels, red, white, magenta, there is only one template that has that kind of level and that is the fine tune template. So I may scroll down and see his answer, but uh, it, it must be this one. Now this is intraday template in the last class, I mentioned that there was this middle panel that is movement, which is representing acceleration, speed, momentum, and momentum calculation contains, contains one component as activity. The other two contains only price information. I mentioned that these three calculations are embedded in the flow color. So the magenta flow color will mean that these are mostly red. Similarly, cyan color, flow color would mean that the movement components are mostly green. That is what I mentioned in terms of hop on template. Now, if we are talking about white pivot line, I think this is, this is the template that has that. Let's go to another stock where the white pivot line comes up. Let's say Apple. Okay, trade station is taking some time. Yes, it has drawn the lines, but I in this review period, I don't see white line. Yeah, white line here. White line, white line, come. Yes, white line here. So in fine tune template, these pivots are different. The, the books explain that the magenta color is last day's close and for 24 hour symbols, that last day's close depends on how you set up the session start and end time. The way I did for Euro USD, I set session start to London, New York, overlap session and end also to that. So based on that, the program calculates last day's close, last day's low, green is last day's high. In our software, green is on the higher side. So green is last day's high, red is last day's low. We choose magenta as last day's close. Cyan, two lines, early range high, early range low. Blue is today's open, 
and white lines are pause lines that are calculated based on intraday data coming up and there may be sometimes yellow color lines these are intraday pivot levels they are only available to real time charts i i hope i could answer that and they are useful for day trading of course for day trading by the way i mentioned many times for q or superior profit way the day trade templates are totally different the signals indicator techniques now if you look at this fine tune template all the signals are zero lag so the pivot levels have zero lag activities of course having zero lag and the bull bear release the only other signal that we use in fine tune template they are zero lag we couldn't make it any faster they will be useless if we try to make it faster so for day trade superior profit way believes that the indicators must be zero lag i see sometimes people use the same template for swing trading and then just change the time frame to 30 minute 5 minute 10 minute to do day trading that is giving away a lot of edge because most of the indicators for swing trading have lag and if you look at the way we can take a stretch release trade or an early range trade i think we will be entering the trade much before and probably when others are entering we will be booking profit so in superior profit way again the day trade templates and the indicators the techniques are very different with very fast way of entering and exiting the next question i see what is sonar sonar because we have two platforms trade station and metastock and they use different names metastock uses the name explorer for searching for opportunities and trade station uses radar also scanner we just use the acronym uh, the name not acronym the name sonar to refer to both of them Th they are both not not abbreviation they are they represent the search feature uh, in in superior profit next question what are the bubbles on the volume chart yes the bubbles in the volume chart all our charts we just look at color coding and signals we don't like to read thresholds and we don't like to set parameters there is no threshold to be set no threshold to be checked there is no parameter to be set so all we do is just look at color and let's look at activity you know these charts look simple but lot of information are there for example for activity green bar means on that day price went up on a closing basis from last day's close to this day's close that is green bar but green bar can be thick like this or thin thin means it is not high and thick means it is high on top of that if we have a green dot that means the activity is very high cyan dot means it is extremely high that is what the dots and the bars and the thicknesses indicate all just by color coding and color coding basically cyan and green always indicates high or bullish red magenta low or bearish yellow is neutral next question and just please the stock oh and just list and just list okay okay and and just list so that was about the white pivot level let's go back to angie's list I think if you are talking about the boundary lines, these are we don't call it pivot level. Pivot levels are horizontal price levels. These are boundary lines. White pivot lines are available only in five minute chart. But it is uh, the other these two pair of lines are boundary lines. Upper boundary is the target for long swing trade usually. Especially go with flow, go with flow, not not reversal trend. For go with flow, upper boundary is the long target, and for short swing trade, go with flow, lower boundary is the target. By the way, if we switch to clean chart in trade station, and we have hotkeys established in trade station, so we will see the earlier memory lines also when they were broken so for example when this memory line was coming from long past and the price was broken we know that this is the only memory is remaining that is still 
resistance memory. There is another that is far above, above eight dollar something, but between this range, between five something to eight plus, there is no resistance memory. So that's why also if it breaks up, comes down a little bit, gives a go through long, it may be a good opportunity. Uh, advantage of restoration is we can see the past memories and exactly where they were broken. Sometimes it helps. However, uh, if we are looking at a chart regularly, then in Metastock we will know, oh, know where the memories are getting broken. Okay, let me continue with the questions. Good questions, by the way. The more you ask, the more everybody benefits, not only the person asking. Yes, yes, Bina says it is cool. It's, Restration is an award-winning broker, and so is Metastock. Metastock is a charting platform, is award-winning. By the way, Restration is useful only for US market. Many of us are trading in multiple markets, so Metastock and the data coming from Thomson Reuters and Zenith icon. I may take a separate session one day on how I use Zenith. It is extremely powerful extremely powerful it's a separate platform from metastock but comes with metastock real time okay what is go with flow is this the indicator saying that the, i'm going to the next question what is going through is it indicator saying that these stocks are bearish for today yes go with flow is one of the trade setups we have what we did and i know uh, i am past the one hour 30 minute schedule time but if you allow me i will continue it is always good to clarify these questions so what we did in superior profit we wanted to have some simple trade setup so for that first we analyze the market and defined four distinct market condition one is trending and everybody knows that where the instrument goes up with higher high and higher low and in that case we if it is an uptrending like in this case we wait for the stock to go up to swing low and then tilt up and take the trade right at the bottom but after it tilts up and that is when the flow candle color turns cyan for q hop on template that is an optimal long entry point with a stop loss just below recent low low risk and we try to capture profit at the upper boundary usually it will be at the swing high that is the trending market and we have a setup for that go with flow with an unambiguous checklist so that at the right edge of the chart we can decide just like you saw bank of america jpm we could decide easily looking at the right side of the chart i personally don't like to show traders charts in the middle and claiming that I could go long, go short, I might have done that, would have done that, should have done that. That's why I like to take trades only from the traders community. Sometimes to make a case, I may share Forex trades, for example, I'm not a big Forex trader. So for Australian dollar, I took the example of Enamul's question and share, but for stocks, I prefer to share only the trades that I post in community or other traders like Binoy post. Okay, coming back to the market condition, trending is the first market condition. And then we have a very powerful signal, which is headwind signal, which comes up at the top of a market move or bottom of a move if it is declining market, right when the market declines at the very top. So Again, we try to take a shot with small stop loss and try to book profit in this case with at near, near the value area once the risk distance is covered. The third trade setup is box trade setup, which is on market condition sideways where the highs and lows are approximately at same levels. Again, we let the price go down and tilt up, take a long, let the price go up and tilt down, take a shot. So you can see from today's class, the gold and USO, GLD, USO, we are looking for something like this. Price go up till down, then we want to take a short trade on gold or price go down, tilt up. We are trying to take a long trade in USO. Sometimes it is sideways using the watermark levels. Sometimes it may be inside a triangle using the memory lines, again, extremely powerful and very, very useful lines. And in that case, we call it a bounce trade and the setups are slightly different. The fourth market condition is 
when a stock was for example going up and suddenly drops hits a pre-existing say memory support and then tilts up again we wait for tilting up take a low risk trade and book profit somewhere in the uh, value area so we have four market conditions and only four market trade setups sorry trade setups and for each of the trade setups let me clear this go back to our site for each of the trade setups if we go to home page then go to education and swing trading there is an unambiguous checklist in in this slideshow one for go with flow long that is trend following long then trend following short same for headwind box and bounce and if you go to education then books videos they have much more detail on these indicators setups everything okay let me let me continue please spend some time going through this material that will be useful okay the, 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 about the pivot line again the question from anonymous where they were dotted yes in meta stock the pivot lines come as dotted line again here in meta stock the pivot levels in fine tune template come as dotted line but trade station is able to draw them in fine tune if i go to trade station can draw them as a continuous line yeah I, there is a question on whether I prefer TradeStation or MetaStock. Both are award-winning platforms in their own way. So when I am trading in Singapore market, India market, or any market like Hong Kong, Japan, I have no choice but to use MetaStock. And also, as I keep on saying, the Zenith is a powerful platform. I always use that, whether I am trading US or other markets. So I have to use MetaStock. They are award-winning in their own way. But for US market trading, I like trade station because you know everything is on my menu here just like in metastock also everything is on my menu so if i want to switch to hop off template in metastock i have set up the menu and the hop off template comes up in trade station i have set up everything in menu on the queue system so that not only can i switch template either using hotkey or using the menu but i can open up the menu to see my positions if i have any to place the order also and i have a lock feature i have if i unlock i can actually place the trade Trustation allows to place the trade even from the chart so i can just tell click somewhere here and say okay price goes above it take a long by the way that is not superior profit way rather uh, yeah if there is not a superior profit way if it is a proper trade setup for example, early range breakout. Let me go to early range breakout. Suppose this is the early range formed for NG's list. It's a beautiful trade, by the way, day trade. Again, so here I could click once the early range is formed here. You can see high and low. I could click here and say if price hit this level, enter the long position using stop, stop buy order. So I will fulfill the order. Stop will be at early range low and once the profit target is hit which is the risk distance was easily hit so those can be done in trade station because it is a brokerage platform also so for us trading of course i use trade station but i i i am very happy with both the i i have to use meta stock it's a beautiful platform and zenith is beautiful okay i think that those lines i i answered it is same uh, same in trade station meta stock same calculation just Meta stock draws the fine tune or any pivot level as dotted line and restriction draws them as continuous line. So I, I described sonar, uh, the tabular dashboard form in trade station. This is extremely powerful for me. Not only does it give these trade signals and floats them up, but it gives a lot of information whether there was a gap open or not since open did it go down or up what was the percentage up down on a closing basis was there a false move meaning in this case again red is bearish i am seeing that kb home initially gapped up right but then 
it came down by 1.2 percent that is defined as a false move and if the false move is even bigger then it becomes a reversal candle but we can see there was no reversal here then we can see instantly without looking at the chart where the direction lines are bullish whether the traffic light is bullish whether there is a headwind signal so this is referring to the signal and this is referring to the trade setup whether there is a stretch release or not which can be combined with the activity to see if there is a box setup or not relative performance is bullish or not and we using real option data it calculates whether option volatility percentile is high or low so again option percentile low is always magenta red and that means option price will be very cheap but if option percentile is high shown in green in this case this stock is down so now we can see there is a possible bearish flow so there is a go with flow short potential however we see the option implied volatility percentile is very high percentile that means option price will be high in that case i would not like to buy a simple put though i am maybe bearish on dow i will not like to buy put because option price is very high instead i may just short the stock or maybe short vertical short call vertical is also bearish so this is very useful for option traders then also it shows in a dashboard what is the candle pattern the shape of the candle as we refer in meta stock then whether it is at pendulum high or low activity and then industry sector that is also useful to sort the entire list so this is how i do let me again go through the workflow i i showed meta stock many times for trade station let me clear the symbols and i show what i do i have created symbol lists for us market again and custom symbol list so i have also grouped them into different sectors so if i am bearish for example on financials so i can drop it and probably these are low value stocks that has potential of moving more and then i scroll up the screen anything with potential long or short trade for go with flow headwind or bounce they will float up and in real time they will float up on on the entire day basis of course for swing trading i'm going to take trades only near the end of the day hey and then if i see cg okay okay these are the few floated up right so then i can just click on them if i'm bearish on the market let me why am i bearish based on industry sector broad market and these are all financial stocks so let me click on kkr and then just go to my at a glance they are all linked so it will draw for me on the at a glance template with backdrop on the left and i should set it to hop on on the right and then it takes me only few seconds to decide whether i will take a trade or not in this case i will not take because it is moving very sideways so then i go back to the other symbol the other nsa for example come back here and now i see and you can also see clearly between kkr and nsa nsa is of course more bearish very clear right and it takes only few seconds there was a bearish headwind earlier very powerful signal by the way i i am always respectful of all the queue signals and headwind catches the top often not always but often so it could never go up, up after that it went to the yellow support line again that's why if the yellow ascending line is coming nearby we don't like to initiate a short came to the value area then tilted down with a bearish flow candle now if we enter a short the stop will be just above recent high target in this case must be at the our initial target will be at the ascending yellow direction line which also has a support memory so between kkr and nsa clearly nsa is more bearish i think you agree let's look at the other few symbols you know to, to explain it is taking much more time than just looking at the chart now between out and nsa of course nsa is better because out is very close to the support memory so let's ignore that 
and CG. Did we see CG? Okay, here also CG is very close to the support memory. So in less than 10 seconds for these four stocks, I came to the conclusion that if I want to take a shot among this list, then NSA is my candidate. All I did is looked at the color and, and my trade setup that I have in mind already. That was the conclusion. That's how I use sonar in trade station. Of course, I could use the Metastock way also by running what they call scanner. There is a question value area. The, what is value? Value area is the area between the two boundary lines. So usually price will swing to the extreme upper boundary, lower boundary, and come back to the middle. So that is one way of defining value area. It is also the area between the cyan and between the two direction lines, between the, this magenta and cyan direction line, but both way it can be defined either between the two boundary lines or it's usually, not always, but usually will be the same place where the magenta cyan come together. So this is the area, yes, for go with flow, Trend following trade, this is the value area we would like to short. In a clear downtrend, a stock will not go to upper boundary. In a clear downtrend, it will hardly ever go to upper boundary. So it will stay between lower boundary and value area. And the optimal entry point will be indicated by magenta flow candle. We'll take a short with stop just above recent high, take profit at the support line. And as I explained in last class, as the yellow direction line is in going up and support line is memory line going up, we'll have to book profit when they are hit, not only based on the reading on the trade entry day. So that was all I planned to share. We went through gold, US oil as usual, Nifty, Sing dollar, also Australian dollar this week, following up on Inamol's question from last week. Then we went through SPY, QQQ, Daya saw that Daya is weakest, QQQ is strongest. Then we looked at JPM and BAC trade, Bank of America, where we could enter long before others probably and book profit already. Went through sector industry, broad market analysis, and looked at some charts on trade station and meta stuff. So thank, thanks to all of you again for joining. It's a pleasure always to have you. Uh, this, this site, Superior Profit, is meant for disciplined trader and serious traders. And when I see you all coming week after week, I know you are serious and disciplined. I hope so. And it's always my pleasure to be with you. I see, you know, uh, I want to mention one last thing. We have a, a mechanism that the people who participate in quizzes and the people who come to the class regularly, we invite them from time to time in graduates club. It's nothing but a forum where people can share their trade ideas. My experience is traders are very shy to share their trades. I am not, uh, but Binoy is not, by the way. And my experience is that people who share their trade are more disciplined and do better. So I always am appreciative of Binoy. So I will also invite you all if you are joining the class regularly, I have a challenge if somebody joins as anonymous because I don't know how to invite them. So that is just, just the point I wanted to share because I see some anonymous traders are very active, maybe one person, maybe multiple. But if I don't know who you are, I will not be able to invite you in the graduates club. Not that you don't need to be or must be in the graduates club, but it is your choice. There is a question from anonymous FISV. So let us look at that. This is the last symbol to look at today before we close, almost two hours. FISV. And you know, I always like to ask question when, when a trade setup or a stock is shared, what is your view? Please type in your, let, let's break it up. Let's break it up. In the beginning, it always helps us. Is it in uptrend or downtrend? Looking at daily chart, because we are, I hope we are talking about swing trend. 
not long term investment especially if it is a short trade it looks like short to me but but uh, i mean not long but but let's come to that step by step is it in uptrend or downtrend or unknown based on daily chart please type your answer okay overall uptrend be nice yes overall uptrend overall uptrend now i mentioned we are looking for a swing trade now the stock being in overall uptrend is not a, it's very useful but not for swing trader because an average swing trade you see between value area to lower boundary on daily chart it will close within about 5 days so that overall uptrend is fine but if we are looking for swing trade then we will look at the immediate neighborhood on the right hand side and there we can see kind of lower high and lower low especially if it tilts down it will have a lower high and we can say lower low is there so if it tilts down then it will have a confirmed downtrend okay so it is in downtrend so if it is in downtrend yes uptrend in long term and for that uptrend we might have entered trade somewhere is difficult to enter here because i see interestation by the way the earnings shows up so i see also some other presenters telling wow i will buy that stock on this candle i can also see there was a flow candle color cyan but in superior profit way we are not going to enter a trade that day before earnings and claim that we had a huge profit that is misleading and that is gambling to enter a trade one day before earnings so we will not be able to take the trade on this day before this day and after this day let me clear the chart up if i try to enter the trade at the close of this day my stop loss will be very far relative to my potential profit because i i don't know whether it will go up so much or not so based on that calculation my reward will be less relative to my risk and i am not going to take a trade on this position and then there was no easy e trade because every time it goes up every day it goes up my risk distance increases potential profit reduces so i will not be able to take a trade there was a headwind signal it tried to go up then made a false upside breakout made a bearish flow color went to lower boundary came to value area with an indecisive candle on the daily chart and weekly chart also have a very long lower tail so i am neither going to take a long trade nor going to take a short trade now however if it goes down on monday i mean if i'm i must take a trade i will look at early range on monday and if it goes below early range low i will take a short trade if at all i have, i mean somebody forces me to take a trade so tomorrow again early range will be formed early range high early range low if it goes below early range low by the way not at the end of the day the, the move below early range low should happen in the first half not not in the second half that is too late so if it happens in the first half then i may take a short trade and enter put stop at the high but that is just hypothetical because i don't take even a day trade in superior profit way that's the guideline unless i can decide the direction based on the daily chart but there is no clear direction that i can see so i will not take it i will not of course take long position now the plus sign is earnings yes is actually the earnings the eps is shown here on trade station 0.99 cents in this case and the coloring is done let me let me show you something on the if there is a bracket it is negative and red color means it is lower than last quarter so if you see this on my cursor here it is red that means it was lower than last quarter and green means it is higher than previous quarter positive is shown without bracket and negative will be shown with a bracket so that is all the information so good good chart analysis i always love to look at these charts like enamel's um enamel's chart last week or the or cusd and also this one we can see how to read the chart and anticipate and wait for the opportunity patient so that is all for today we are hitting 2 hour thanks a lot again for joining us and 
don't forget to register for the next class for going to education and life class. Other than the weekly market roundup, next week we'll have another session following up on the APEC online summit special. We had a session with Metastock where we went through all the trades I took in the signals forum and I explained how on an annualized basis risking only 2% of capital based on the two months data on annualized basis it has a profit of 60, 60%. Now in Metastock webinar we didn't have facility to Q&A but I always love to have Q&A so I will schedule another session for us through our webinar zoom webinar where we will have Q&A on all the trades explaining where I will explain exactly how I entered and exited those trades where which are the trades in the community forum that is a subscription based forum but that is that is not required to be subscribed to if you have Q system, you can do the analysis yourself, but there is a forum to handhold some people if they want to get that handholding. That is the USA stock ETF options forum. I posted several trades there for last exactly two months, only 11 trades by the way. And I will like to go through all of them and explain the entry and exit in a, the class coming sometime next week. Thanks a lot then for your time. Uh, have a very great weekend and I look forward to seeing you in next class.